Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can actually hear light. Is it possible to make an audio modulated light beam? Let's find out. So this is how I'm going to be translating light into audible sound. So what I have here is a solar panel connected to a speaker. So as you know, what a solar panel does is it translates light into electrical energy. And so what this does is it takes the electric current being produced from the solar panel and it pushes it to the electric speaker here. But how can we get sound out of this? So this isn't quite sound yet. But you can see that by changing the amplitude of the light, I can get kind of a sound pattern. So for example, if I want a 60 hertz tone, then I could just use a strobe light that's at 60 hertz. And then by changing how fast the light's blinking, I can get different tones. So I can turn it up higher. So if I had a special flashlight that changed the brightness of the light depending on the tone needed, then that means I could transmit sound through light. Okay, so all I have here is a flashlight that's connected to the audio jack of my iPad here. And so the brightness of this light is going to change depending on the electrical audio input from the iPad here. So let's see if we can actually transmit sound through light. Let's play my song. Okay, here we go. No way. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, so this is literally coming from the light. So this signal is coming from the light. So now it's modulating so fast that you can't see it visibly, but you can pick it up with your ears. And it sounds just like regular music. That is so awesome. Okay, I'm gonna use my DJ skills now. I have a laser light I'm gonna shine on it. So if you needed to do some secret communication, most people, if they're listening for communications, they're going to be listening into the radio frequency range. So in the visible light range, they won't be expecting any sound signal to be coming from that. But you could use visible light, even the lights in the room you could use to transmit an audible signal to somebody. So for example, here's a secret signal I recorded, and when I shine it on my speaker here, then that signal can be translated into audible sound that my informant can listen for. Okay, so let's play my secret message. So basically all I would need is to shine a light in a room, and somebody has this receiver, you could even have it hooked to earphones if you wanted. That is so cool. That's the most ingenious way ever to communicate with light. So what's really cool about a receiver like this is notice that when you can hear the sound coming from the flashlight here, you can't even see the flashlight changing brightness at all. And that's because your eyes only have a refresh rate of around 23 hertz. So around 23 times per second they can be refreshed. But your ears can hear a much higher frequency than 23 hertz. So that means that we can have lights all around us that are flashing at very low frequencies and we, it looks like a steady stream of light to us. But if we translate that light into sound, then we can actually hear the light. So for example, let's hear the light in this room. 
Okay, so first I'm going to be turning on just an LED bulb. So an LED bulb uses a direct current. So you shouldn't be able to hear the turning on and off of the light on my uh, receiver here. So let's turn on the LED bulb and it should just sound like white noise. You can hear the white noise. So now I'm going to use my compact fluorescent bulbs here. So these actually do use an alternating current. So you should be able to hear 120 hertz tone here. <laughs> so you can clearly hear the buzz now. So let me show you some other things that you may not realize are blinking really fast, like a TV. <laughs> Okay, so the sound you hear is actually the screen refreshing. So the light's getting dimmer and then brighter as the screen refreshes, and we can't see it at all, but this can pick it up. So our ears can pick it up, but our eyes can't. So cool. And also you can hear these weird kind of creepy patterns, even from toys that have flashing LED lights. For example, listen to this one. <laughs> so if you've ever listened to your car radio before, you're already very well aware that electromagnetic waves can be used to transmit sound signals. In the case of when you're listening to the FM radio, that means that the input sound signal is being uh, translated into electromagnetic waves by varying the frequency. And so it's frequency modulated, FM radio. And what happens with AM radio is the amplitude of the electromagnetic waves are modulated and that gets sent out at the speed of light to the receiver, and then that gets transmitted to your speakers that actually transmit it as audible sound. Now the reason we use radio waves is because it's easy to make antennas that pick up radio waves. So basically we have some electrons in one antenna that are vibrating up and down in this antenna, and it sends out this electromagnetic wave, and this other antenna has electrons that start vibrating when it sees that signal. So it's just a vibrating electric field that stimulates another one. So if we can use radio waves to transmit sound signals, then why can't we use light? Because light and radio waves are just different frequencies of electromagnetic waves, so they just have different wavelengths. But transmitting and receiving light from an antenna like we do a radio wave becomes much more difficult. So in general, antennas, in order to transmit or receive electromagnetic waves, have to be around one wavelength long or a half a wavelength long or a fourth a wavelength long. So for a radio frequency like Wi-Fi, that corresponds to around 12 and a half centimeters long. And so that's easy to do in an antenna. You can easily make antennas that are 12 and a half centimeters long. But the wavelength of blue light, for example, is around 300,000 times smaller than that. So in order to efficiently transmit or receive blue light from an antenna, you'd have to have an antenna that's around 300,000 times smaller than a Wi-Fi antenna. So your antenna would only have to be around 1,000 atoms long. Now let's say you could create an antenna that was only a thousand atoms long. Well, you still have another problem. The other problem is how do you drive electrons up and down in your antenna fast enough to transmit visible light? In a radio antenna, you have to have an electrical circuit that can cycle electrons back and forth at a, a few billion times per second. And that's easily doable in a modern electric circuit. But again, for visible light, like blue light, for example, you'd have to have an electrical circuit that could vibrate electrons back and forth at around 640 trillion times per second. So around three orders of magnitude faster than our current electrical circuits can do. So what that finally means is that in order to transmit sound with visible light, we can't do it with antennas like we can with radio waves. Now one thing that would make these audio modulated light waves worse than radio technology is the fact that the wavelength is so short. So that means that it can't go through stuff like radio waves can. So that means if you're going to use this technology to communicate with somebody, they have to be in a plain line of sight. And also another very important thing that would make this a lot harder to communicate with is the fact that it, the solar panel picks up a lot of different frequencies. So basically anything in a broad range of light gets picked up, even UV light gets picked up by it. So this is a UV flashlight. 
So you can see there's this broad range of light that we can pick up with this. So that means that there's a lot of noise. So the noise to signal ratio with this type of technology would be very high, especially during the daytime because we have a lot of visible and non-visible light around us. So it's picking up all this noise and we, we're maybe trying to pick up a tiny little light signal far away. That's the reason why we don't get a lot of noise with radio frequencies because we tune it to a specific frequency and anything that's outside of that frequency we don't pick up. And that's because we're using antennas like I explained before. That's why we use antennas because you can tune antennas. But with a solar panel like this, it's very hard to tune because it's not an, exactly an antenna. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. And leave me any questions or comments you have in the comments section about this technology, about anything else you want to talk about, and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.